everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Metcast Movie Journal. This is the show where I do quick reviews for the movies that I watch, give them a score out of 10, and then add them to my list. So let's see what movie we're reviewing today. On April 4th, I watched Alien Resurrection, which came out in 1997. And if you haven't seen the previous chapter, Alien 3, that one ended with Sigourney Weaver's Ripley throwing herself into a smelter to kill herself along with her unborn alien baby. But the franchise was still making money, and it couldn't exactly go on without her. So we get a quick explanation for her return here, with her being brought back as a clone. The setup perfectly fits in line with that classic alien theme of the evil corporations being more interested in the potential profit the alien offers, rather than the danger it represents, with it being revealed that she was cloned just so they could try to save the alien growing inside her. The supporting cast is stronger than I expected, from Ron Perlman as the tough guy genre, to Winona Ryder as Cal, to a wonderful performance by Brad Dourif as Gediman, the artificial life, for another standard alien check in the box, even all the way down to Dan Hedaya as General Perez. They were all able to bring their own unique style to their characters, and breathe a real life into them. It was smart to have such a strong supporting cast, so it wouldn't need to be an entirely Ripley-focused film. She's clearly still the most important character in the story, and the question of whether she will remain loyal to humanity or give in to her maternal instincts and try to protect the alien growing inside her was played up in a very effective way, with Renona Ryder's character Cal being the primary voice of distrust in Ripley. So getting to see those two very talented actresses square off was a lot of fun. And one of my favorite things about this franchise as a whole now is how similar each film is able to be in terms of tone and style, but also how wildly different they're all able to be simply by tweaking the story a bit. From the original Alien film, which is easily the closest thing to a standard horror film the franchise has ever produced, to James Cameron coming in and turning Aliens into one of the best pure action movies ever made, in my opinion. To the third alien, Alien Cubed, being set in a prison, which very much let it morph into a pretty standard prison break style movie that just happened to have aliens in it. All the way up to this chapter, Resurrection, feeling like the Joss Whedon production it was. Almost to the point of feeling like a slightly different crew from the Firefly stuck dealing with our favorite alien killing machine. It's a really cool thing that each film manages to be so unique and different, and yet they all manage to hit the same important beats along the way. I don't want to spoil the twist, since I think it's probably the most effective one in the franchise so far, which is saying something since the same sort of twist comes up in most Alien movies, so I was almost a little miffed at myself for not being able to see it coming. Most of the credit there probably goes to the writing for being able to cover it up, but some of the credit has to go to the actors too, which again, isn't something I would usually expect from these movies, but the acting here is easily on par with the original. These movies have never really been about anything more than providing an exciting and sometimes terrifying thrill ride in space being chased by big scary aliens, and in that way, this was a clear turnaround from the last chapter, but it's also becoming very apparent that there simply isn't much story left to tell, and the need to bring Ripley back so bad that they cloned her is the most obvious example of this. There was definitely still enough material left to warrant this chapter, but it's also just beginning to creep into that territory of just being made to cash in on the dedicated fans who go to see any movie with Alien in the title. And just the simple fact that this is now the fifth movie I've seen with that same alien running around it's starting to drain the figurative well of enjoyment I can derive from them. The only film left in this franchise for me to watch now is Covenant, but I think I'll be happy once I do, so I can leave the franchise alone for a bit, and hopefully Hollywood will do the same. Because if they keep making them, it can only continue to hurt the franchise even more. This one comes in at number 3 out of 5 in terms of the Alien movies I mentioned, and I gave it a 5 out of 10, and it landed at number 944 on my list, putting it right here, in between Buried and Bedazzled. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching another edition of Metcalf's Movie Journal. Be sure to click like and subscribe for new videos every week. And if you have a movie that you really want me to watch, be sure to drop me a comment.